So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. And today is February 11th, 2021. And the topic for this episode is I am love. So in a few days, it will be Valentine's Day. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to shine a light on love. Now, of course, Big disclaimer, I'm not um, by any means suggesting that I know um, anything about love or, or that I'm kind of a love guru and nothing of that sort. I'm simply sh um, kind of sharing my own journey on understanding my, like my own, own take on what love is and you know, all my um kind of looking at what shaped my my values around love or beliefs around love because last week I started talking about um, like how we how we um, think of authority and also um, about sovereignty being being sovereignty simply means thinking for ourselves and really um, honoring the, the 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 spirit that that is us and and looking into how um, our upbringing really shapes um, our sense of self and uh, who who really has the authority and all that and so I want like to do this a very similar thing is to really look at how I kind of um, because I can only do this from from my own point of view because I know my own mind um, best and kind of I've been navigating my own psyche for for you know the, the last couple of decades that I've been living. So I'm just sharing what I find and and um, what shaped my beliefs around love and and I invite all of you if it really resonate with you is for you to start to look it at what shaped your beliefs on love and especially if you seem to be having a bit of um, challenge around this idea then uh, then I would definitely suggest that you start to look at what's shaping your beliefs around love because what we believe is really what we will manifest in our life. That's how we create from our mind. So, so and then, um, and yes, of course, all of this, all of this, my beliefs um, around love was shaped by my parents, because our parents, for better or for worse, they, they really take a hit. Because how our psyche was formed was really um, it's, it's really when we incarnate on earth we the spirit the eternal spirit interacting with our human care caretakers meaning our parents who played a the a big part in shaping how we understand and how we navigate or um, misunderstand or misnavigate this playground that we called earth. So there are so many ideas that's relating to this topic of love and I really only have time to touch on maybe one or two of them that I find that it's most important. So the first one that I, I I think it's really the most crucial one that I want to touch on is this idea of self-love, of, of loving ourselves, and, um, and, and also the lack thereof, the, the, I, I would say the lack in really um, knowing how to care for ourselves and to, to love ourselves. So I grew up in, in Hong Kong, um, pretty much in 
most of my teen years, I was I was growing up in Hong Kong. And I think maybe because it's Hong Kong is, there are just so many people in such a relatively small space that there the, um, and also I think it's the, the, the time that I was growing up in that at the time and in the culture in Hong Kong, the area, um, it's a time and it's a society where appearance is was really everything. So there's a lot of emphasis on looking good. There's a lot of emphasis on looking like you know what you're doing. That so it's a, a lot of it is about appearance. So I was really um, I know growing up exactly or I should say very much aware of you know how I'm expected to look how I'm expected to behave um, in order to make myself be lovable or to um, deserve love however I have very little idea about you know how I should feel about myself my sense of self there really is no one talking about that. Um, I, I don't think I ever heard of that from my parents. And I really spent a um, very a, a majority of my life where the idea of self-love was very alien to me. I really don't know um, what that is. I know how to um, really behave or shape my own behavior and um, beliefs in order to somehow, I wouldn't say manipulate because I didn't really felt that it is manipulate, but it's really to, to please people, please other people, the people around me, whether it is my family or the people that I work with um, uh, or the people that I come into contact with. I was really very good at you know playing the part so that I would it's most likely for me to to um, receive love or at the very le least um, the the least likely to um, have other people um, don't like me or hate me so so I, that's what I'm, I'm I'm very good at and so I really bought into, or I sh should say that, you know, for me, my idea of love was really mostly, my understanding of love is really mostly from the outside in. So, so what I'm doing is trying to um, look a certain way, behave a certain way so that I can get the love from outside in. And I'm I'm not really conscious enough to, to have the idea of loving myself and having that love inside so that I can, I have love to go from inside out. So that, so it's really very one direction. I was very good at um, creating the condition so that I would be able to get love from outside, but really the the idea of you know what do I need to do um, how do I need to to um, I would say understand uh, or, or, or learn that love from the inside out I was for the most part of my life I really have very little idea how that is done or that it is even necessary so, um, so I, I really, looking back on some of my earlier love experience, I totally bought into the, the, the whole idea of the Hollywood style of what love is like. So the man should be, you know, like blonde hair, blue eyes, tall, dark, handsome. And the woman is young, beautiful, and look flawless in a swimming suit. And of course, my body didn't fit into that. So I really don't, don't, um, 
I, it's it's like I was trying to be the nicest person so that I would um, believe, even believe that I deserve love. And, and so this idea of, you know, love has to be this high octane, earth shattering kind of love, something that I craved and I really um, am looking for that. And of course that's, that has nothing to do with um, what love really is about. So there's a lot of misunderstanding, miss, miss opportunities about um, to learn really more about what love truly is. And, and also, um, I think when, when is the turning point? I, the, I think the turning point for me was when I, my, my own marriage started to you know, fall apart. Um, not because there was that, you know, not because of thought of myself or my ex at the time or, or my, my husband at the time, ex now, nothing because of that. But I think it's mostly because I totally lost sight of who I am. And so after a um, few years of marriages, marriage is like I you know one day I just don't know who I am anymore I really don't know what is important and I'm I felt completely lost um I lost myself and I think when when I finally felt that sense of I don't know who I am anymore that was when I started to um, learn and to find that that sense of self that that self love that was the beginning of it, but the the beginning of finding myself and also going after more the spirituality side of of things is it also um, I would say perpetuated another another um, hmm. Uh, program or another belief that does not does not really support real spirituality and and that was really um, I, I felt more disconnected from my own body it's because from a spirituality point of view at the time anyways the my belief was that you know your spirit is is you know the the is more superior as anything to do with the body, anything to do with um, sexuality or um, like, like all that kind of body-based sensation is really something that you need to deny your body and the body is something that you have to conquer and, and um, control. And so that set up another set of um, wild goose chase so, so coming back to, to, I think, more recent years where I really start to um, look at and, and really start to do the work of self-love. It's not that I, I don't know about self-love. It is just that it's, it's an idea that, you know, every now and then I would remember, but most of the time I, I don't. Most of the time I'm just so, I was just so engrossed in the, the, the social programming. Um, and every now and then, maybe when I go to um, a, a retreat or workshop, about spirituality, then I'm kind of reminded, oh, the self-love, yes. And then once the, the workshop and retreat is over, it, um, it gradually, I become, I, I forgot that this, this part of self-love, whereas now it's like, for me, this, this idea of self-love is something that is more front and center. And I'm doing more work on, on, um, growing that part 
of this self-love. And um, for example, most recently, I really noticed that um, for the longest time, when I look into the mirror, I was no noticing more of the, the imperfections in my body rather than um, anything else. So, so noticing the, oh, I have my skin is, uh, I have this new blemish or this new um, laugh lines or, oh, my, my hair is getting grayer. All of those you know, little nitpicks. And, um, and it, it's something that it's, I so naturally think of when I look into the mirror. Whereas now when I look into the mirror and I like, I think of, oh, I have more gray hair. I would now immediately catch myself and say, and that's a beautiful thing. Because <laughs> it's, it's, I notice that when I nitpick about my own, how I look, it's really, I'm really looking at myself and judging myself from the programs. I'm not really um, looking at myself from the the spiritual thing as a, as a spirit. So, you know, body is a body. More gray hair, less gray hair, does not matter. Mm, the, the body is simply a vessel that allows me to experience this reality. And I am not the body. So, so then it's, there's more of a recognition that, oh, if when I think of when I notice more gray hair, it is really noticing from the the point of view of the programs that um, so it's 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 like oh I notice you now you this program that that thinks that you know um, gray hair or laugh lines is somehow bad and so. I've been doing more of that, really starting to grow the, the, the self-love and really starting to do the work in, in getting more solid of loving myself unconditionally and, and also um, in preparation for, for doing this, this topic. It's like the last week I've been really going through in my memory, reprocessing my um, my other relationships in the past, which for for better or worse, whether I look at those as being failures or success, all of that, I, I really did make that that the time to go back and reprocess and really look at look at the, the my memories of those relationships from the point of view of spirit rather than from the point of view of um, ego um, and all the programs about this earth-shattering Hollywood style love. So, and I did really feel a much more um, sense of of accepting myself and loving and loving myself more. So that was that was fun, <laughs> and then also I um, looked at it as my past relationship, um, and really came to to understand that that we don't fall in love randomly, or at least I did not fall in love randomly in the past. There was always a pattern. And the, the, for me, my pattern is that when I, um, it's, I usually fall for someone that has a quality in them that somehow I admire, but I don't believe that I have in myself or that, <clears throat> or that I want to, to, or that I believe that I can develop that quality in myself. So when I see someone that has that quality that I think I really admire, then I would 
we fall in love with that person. So instead of recognizing that, oh, that is why this person is attractive to me, is I really project it um, that that love onto that person and that relationship. And of course that 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 puts a lot of um, pressure on the person who have no idea that I have put him or at least some part of him on the pedestal and really relying on him to, to supply me with all of those qualities which I admire. So, so then it, it becomes more, it became more clear to me that uh, yes, I fell in love with that person um, because of these qualities. And I really like the, the, my big takeaway from, from doing this, that exercise of reviewing the past relationship is, is actually, I got to the point where I, I have to give myself the permission to start to develop those qualities that I admire in other people that I, Actually, the idea is not to to project it on someone else. It's actually to to know that oh, those, those are the qualities that that I really admire, and I want and I give myself permission to start to take action in order to start to develop those qualities in myself and really have that that patience and love for myself to to take the time to develop those qualities so that I don't need someone else to, to supply me with that. So then um, after doing all of these kind of self analysis on, on what love is, in the end though, what, what is love? It's what does love look like and, and what does it feel like? Um, I have to come to the conclusion that I can't tell you. I, I don't know. Because um, for, for most of my life, I've been kind of playing in the inverted matrix. So what I've learned or what I've struggled with in terms of love is really from the inverted matrix point of view. And now that um, we are moving into the fifth dimension. It's a completely new playground, which means that we get to learn about what love truly is from a fifth dimension point of view. And how is that going to look like? I don't know. We are just, we're just, um, we're just starting that journey. It's not like we, we, um, even anywhere uh, close to fully integrated into fifth dimension yet. So, however, that really gives me a lot of hope and um, I would say excitement that mm, we all, like I myself, and also I think all of us who who really has is um, committed to moving into fifth dimension, is that we get to to learn about love what really love is from a higher perspective. And, um, and love, I believe, is, is really one of those things is like, who is God? What is God? It's, it's when I ask that question, I draw a blank. It's just like when I ask the question, what is love is? I don't know what love is, and I definitely don't know who this God is. Like I, some people call God, and then some people use universal creator or the, so, but that's, but what is that? We don't know yet, because from the point of, from the point of view of our understanding now, the idea of um, love is still something that is so undefined, just like God is. We don't, we, 
or at least I don't think we have any idea what divinity, what God really is, we are nowhere close that. So our understanding of what that is, is only from our level of understanding. However, I do know one thing, and that is it all starts from um, loving ourselves in developing that, that self-love, whatever that means. And um, there's no wrong answer. And it's like loving ourselves and starting to take responsibility for ourselves is um, it's very, it's really the first step. And also from what I gather is that you know, love is, it's not a feeling. It's, it's not a feeling because um, feelings are kind of very flitting. I can feel really, you know, ooey gooey about someone um, one day and then who knows, it could be the next day that that feeling or, or that person just have to do something to tick me off and that feeling can just go right out the door. So love is, for me, it's not really a feeling. It's the feeling is too flitting or too fleeting. Um, so for me, love is my understanding, or at least my current understanding of love is that it's a choice. It's that I, the choice that I choose to hold a certain benevolent feeling towards myself or some other p person um, without any expectations. So um, that's really what, and that's really the, well, it's unconditional love. It's, that's my my definition of what unconditional love is. It's really choosing, choosing to to hold that feeling of benevolence towards myself or someone else without any expectation and without needing that myself or that person to to do anything to live up to. To, to or to earn that love it's really something that I choose to that I choose to use that and to choose to um, feel that and choose to make the uh, or do the the things and um, choose to take the actions that would be consistent with that choice. So that's my take on love so far. And um, thank you for allowing me to talk about this.